Hi everybody, welcome to a new episode of Bass Habits. Today we're going to talk about English punk rock. The band is The Stranglers and the bass player is of course JJ Burnell. The Stranglers are an English rock band who emerged via the punk rock scene in the mid 70s. Scoring 19 UK top 40 albums to date in a career spanning 5 decades, they're one of the longest surviving bands to have originated in the UK punk scene. Over time, their output gradually grew more refined and sophisticated and ventured into pop territory starting from the 80s. Many people tell you that they are their early sound, however, was driven by a distinctive melodic bass, which is particularly prominent on the early Stranglers recordings, such as the hit singles No More Heroes and Peaches. Behind all this is bass player JJ Brunel, who reminds me of a weird cross between D.D. Ramon and Paul Simonon. In the early days, Brunel's aggressive sound was created using a Fender Precision bass, and though in later years he would use a variety of instruments, including a Yamaha BB2000 and a Steinberger L2, when talking about a JJ tone, generally people refer to the first part of the Strangler's career, because after that the band went towards a more poppy sound and the raw bass got kinda lost in the mix. So how do you get JJ's tone? Well, first of all, you need the right gear. Besides using a Fender Precision bass, you need to equip it with Rotor Sound Swing Bass Round 1 strings. I haven't found evidence of the gauge, but to me it sounds like 45105. Next thing you want to do is play with the pick, hitting very hard, either very close to the bridge or right over the pickup for maximum carnage. I'll never get tired of repeating this, if you pick hard enough over the pickup of a good P bass, you'll need no distortion. In regard of what amp, there's different theories. Legend says it was a guitar high watt 100 watts amplification. And that sounds fair. There's a lot of mid-range and not much low end, which gives the bass its recognizable mid-range packed tone. However, according to many sources, the defining factor was the use of a Marshall 412 speaker cabinet, in which the speaker cones were ripped creating a distorted sound. It's also on Wikipedia, so I'm assuming that is true, however, I wouldn't bet on it. Man, what goes around with blown speakers? I had blown speakers on the road and it's one of the worst things that can happen to a bass player. Seriously, it's horrible. It doesn't sound anywhere near good and it makes you want to die. So it can happen to use a broken cabinet if you're on the road and you're broke or don't have time to get it fixed, but in the studio, I'm not sure about that. Number 2. Play in unison with the keyboard. One of the things that set apart the Stranglers from most of the other bands of the era is they had a keyboard player. And sometimes I can't help but thinking about the doors. That paves the way to some pretty cool interaction between bass and keyboard that often play in unison, creating a cool and very original texture. Peaches is the best example. Number 3. Change the root note. This is the most interesting aspect of Burnell's playing. When talking punk rock, one can normally expect basic stuff. You know, 3 chords, 4 on the floor and bass locked on root all the time. To the contrary, even in their early years, the Stranglers had very sophisticated and uncommon melodic solutions, especially for a punk rock band. Though it's not that unusual for English punk to have external influences, I had to say that the Stranglers take it to another level. 
JJ's bass guitar contributes to this exotic melodic tapestry by not playing the root note of the chord that's been played by the guitar and the keyboard. The main riff of Something Better Change is a pretty good example. While guitar and keys keep a steady F sharp and B pattern, The bass deviates from the root under the B, hitting major third and perfect fourth, creating a little harmony. When it locks in with the guitar at the end of the song, it sounds epic. Also, on the little bridge before the first chorus, the guitar hits F sharp, C sharp and E major. While the bass goes C sharp, G sharp and E. Once again, creating a cool little harmony that makes you kind of wonder what happened. On Duchess, while the chords are D major, A major and E major, bass goes D, C sharp and then B before walking down to root. Strangler's music is packed with these little nuances and they're one of the elements that make it so special and different from the other punk bands of the era. Number 4. Use flat second intervals. JJ's favorite interval seems to be the flat second, which is also one of the most dissonant intervals you can have. So many of his licks use a Phrygian scale. I just go for stroll in the trees. Or harmonic minor. Yeah, I know the last one is chromatic, but it sounds fantastic and I needed an excuse to put it in the video. Number 5, minor pentatonic. Gee, minor pentatonic and Fender Precision, did we see that before? Like many of their contemporaries, also the Stranglers have a passion for the minor pentatonic scale, which is the backbone of the majority of JJ's riffs. There's a lot more to be discovered. In the music of the Stranglers, the bass has primary importance, and there's literally tons of cool licks and nuances worth checking out. Tank is also pretty cool. Out of the four bars that make the chorus, JJ plays three of them in different ways. To sum it up, a pretty unique and creative bass player, the early JJ is instantly recognizable, also due to the fact that the bass guitar is very loud and at the center of the mix. I also need to point out that the bass guitar is the element that makes the Stranglers music heavy, because if you think about it, all the rest is a keyboard, a pretty soft drum sound and a very light guitar that would probably suit well a band like The Cure or The Smiths. But JJ's playing style and sound gave the Stranglers a different edge and made them stand out from the crowd of punk bands in the mid 70s. And that's it, thank you so much for watching this video, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment and follow me on Instagram. Also check the link in the description for cool merchandise. Thank you.